they say electric cars and racetracks don't mix. Porsche's first EV, the high-tech, high-performance Taycan, begs to differ. I'm here at The Bend in South Australia, a world-class circuit, to see how fast, but also how far, this electric car can go at full tilt. The Taycan range starts at just under 200 grand for the 4S, but here we're testing the range-topping Turbo S, which is yours for just under $340,000. But before we go troppo on the racetrack, I want to take you through some of the cool features inside Porsche's first ever EV sports car. Porsche has gone all out with this interior. The retro-esque design has a real Blade Runner feel, starting with not one, but two infotainment touchscreens. You operate absolutely everything with touchscreens in this car. There are no hard buttons, and usually I'm not a big fan of this, but it really works here because these temperature controls, they stay there all the time, and they look cool. There's that haptic feedback, plus you've got some really good infotainment options here, and my favorite part is obviously the passenger screen. It's almost as good being a passenger in this car as it is the driver. The digital instrument cluster looks stunning. Its curved screen and super high definition graphics with heaps of customization options add a futuristic touch. The electrically adjustable seats are surprisingly comfortable. The supple leather upholstery, a nice touch. Plus, there's two large cup holders, USB-C ports, and a signature Porsche steering wheel. This is the part where I normally find something negative to talk about, but I'm really struggling here. This feels like a Porsche. The steering wheel, really sporty, all the touch points, high levels of luxury, and really, really good build quality. This is very impressive. And you know what? The rear seats are just as impressive. They're nice and form-fitting, they're comfortable, and I've got a bit of leg room here, it's not too bad. Decent headroom as well, despite the sloping roof. Backseat amenity is pretty good too. You've got the fold down armrest with some high quality cup holders. I like the fact there's a touch screen here with quad zone climate control, very nice. And initially I thought there's no USB ports, but guess what? Two USBs hidden down here, not too shabby. Unlike the 911, there's no engine back here, which creates plenty of room for your luggage. In fact, there's no engine under the bonnet either, and although it's not a massive space, you can certainly fit a couple of bags in there. This has to be the best storage for a Porsche sports car, and the lack of a large conventional combustion engine also allowed the exterior designers more freedom. The front end has a curvaceous and contemporary design that doesn't try to mimic the iconic 911, while the car's rump is tastefully sculpted and definitely has more of a Porsche attitude. The wheels hug the body very nicely, and I like what Porsche has done here by making it seriously aerodynamic. Check out these lower air dams. They can open up to improve brake cooling, which is what's happened now, or close over to improve aerodynamics. It's very impressive. Some other neat features include these super cool retractable charge covers. If you plug it into a regular household power point, it'll take around 39 hours for a full charge on a 22 kilowatt fast charger, which might get installed at your home, for instance, that drops to around four hours. And if you've got access to a 350 kilowatt supercharger, it will fill up the Taycan's battery pack in around 15 minutes. Even the brakes help recoup energy for the big 93 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. And Porsche says the Taycan Turbo S is good for a 405 kilometer range. But the most amazing thing about this car is that its powerful twin electric motors can propel it from zero to 100 in just 2.8 seconds. Let's put that claim to the test. All right, so launch control, how does it work? A lot of cars, you've got to push this button, you've got to twiddle that thing, you've got to do a lot of complicated stuff. This one, put it in Sport or Sport Plus, foot on brake, foot on throttle, and off we go. Oi, 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 and there's 100. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. That <laughs> oh, Jiminy Willikers. Almost makes you feel a bit sick. You do that too many times after a big lunch, and oh boy, oh boy, watch out.
Okay, that's clearly next level acceleration, but it didn't achieve the claimed 2.8 second sprint. It did it in 2.54 seconds. Now, that is just ridiculous. I've never felt that sort of acceleration in any car I've tested in my career, and I've tested thousands. The only one that comes close is the Tesla Model S. That is bananas. Straight line speed is one thing, but the inherent extra weight an EV brings tends to be their undoing on tight corners. Because the battery pack is positioned along the base of the car, it has the lowest centre of gravity of any Porsche road car. Despite being an EV, you can still feel the Porsche DNA in the drive dynamics, however you don't get the brake feel and modulation some Porsches offer. I've been flogging the Porsche 911 Turbo around here today as well, and while there are similarities in the steering, they're both super direct, the way it punches out of corners, those clever all-wheel drive systems, the torque vectoring, I gotta tell you, it's very, very different. It's almost too easy. You've gotta learn the 911, you've gotta respect it. This thing is kinda of like super fast exotic cars for dummies. You just point and shoot. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I don't know, I kinda of feel like I want a bit of a challenge. The top shelf Taycan is by no means slow. It's effectively as quick off the line as the fastest 911, time after time. And I was almost as fast around the track as in the 911 Turbo. But the lack of meaningful oral feedback makes a big difference to involvement levels. Because it's louder and significantly lighter, the 911 Turbo delivers more driver engagement, clearer steering feedback, and, well, more soul. The Taycan is hugely capable on circuit, but like a cat that knows it's going to be fed every night, there's a cold lack of emotion here. It's a very strange sensation. Insane acceleration with no mechanical clatter, no background noise from that combustion engine to join. It's very strange. That said, torque delivery is instant and savage, pinning you into the seats, and it does not feel like a 2.3 tonne bus at any speed. Four-wheel steering and torque vectoring ensure it tips into corners and tracks through them with confidence. The German electric car has a two-speed gearbox, super fast and meta fast. Fair dinkum, if you rock up at a track day and see one of these, be prepared to be overtaken, frequently. Honestly, I feel like a 12 year old going on a roller coaster for the first time. It is sublime. I like this. I like this a lot. We even managed to max out the high voltage Porsche at just over 260 kilometers an hour on the main straight. But how many laps will a full charge get you? Although it's tricky to say exactly, let me put it this way. We were refueling the petrol powered 911 turbo before we had to recharge the Taycan. I don't think 911 owners are gonna be trading in for this thing for pure track work just yet, but in my book, that's all the evidence needed to endorse this as a genuine track day machine.